Hi, library friends. Welcome back to another edition of Book Recommendation Bingo. We are on week nine, so we are getting there, you guys. Hopefully, you're filling up your bingo card and on your way to getting bingo so you can get a gift certificate to Trailside Treats for your work. And hopefully, you'll remember to bring in your book review sheets so we can hang them up here at the library so that we can give book recommendations of your own to your fellow readers. Okay, so don't forget to do that and we will see you soon, but let's look at what our books are for week nine. So we're starting with our picture books like we always do. And the first one that I have for you is called We Disagree. And it's Bethany Dini Mergoya. And so this book I found really great, especially since a lot of times we get into a little bit of arguments with people about things that we don't necessarily agree on. And this is a great way that you can find out that you can disagree about stuff, but still be friends. So here we have a little mouse and a squirrel. And he's saying yes, he's saying no. And obvious, they disagree about a lot of things. So he's asking questions. Hey, do you like figs? And he says, oh, no, I don't. I snack on twigs. So just because they have some differences here, like blue and pink, blue polka dots, and he likes red, he doesn't like spots, and all these different things that they disagree on, they keep going along and they can't find anything that they like. And they're getting madder and madder and madder, and they're ready to argue. Oh, well, they decided they can't be friends. Do you really think they can't be friends just because they disagree about a few things? I don't know. You'll have to read the book to find out, but I will tell you it is a very good ending. So if you want to come check out We Disagree, come and borrow it from the library. Okay, another book that I have um, is called Sugar in Milk, and it's by Thruti Umergar. And it's kind of a story, um, takes place in present day, but it also is almost um, a folktale within a story because this girl moves to America. And when she first came to the country, she felt very alone. And so she didn't know what to do. She was with her auntie and her uncle, and she had plenty of things and all of that, but she still missed home. And she missed all of the things that she left behind. So, in being sad, her auntie tells her a story. And the story takes place in the ancient land of Persia, and they were forced to leave their home just kind of like she was. And when they went to find a new place, and by the way, just take a look at these pictures in this book. They are absolutely stunningly beautiful. So it's a feast for the eyes as well as for the ears with this one. And so they get to the king who in India and he doesn't want to let them come into his land. He says there's too many people here already. And so they have to leave, but for one person, one person decides he's going to try to convince the king that letting the Persian people stay is not such a bad thing. So this story goes on and it's all about a cup of milk and some sugar. So if you can imagine why a cup of milk and some sugar would change the king's mind, you can figure that out and hear the rest of the story. So again, gorgeous, gorgeous pictures, beautiful story, beautiful idea. And so if you would like to check this one out, it's called Sugar in Milk, all right? Another set that I have here, we're actually gonna flip to some nonfiction. And this is also about a point of view, right? That's kind of what some of these other stories were about, right? A point of view, everybody has a point of view and some people disagree about points of view, but we're gonna look at point of view from some animal eyes in this series. So this is a dog's view of the world and this one's a reptile's view of the world. And they're both by Flora Brett. And so these are first fact books. So they're picture books. And what's kind of fun and cool is it shows the animals up close and all the different parts of the animals. And it also shows what they see. Oh my goodness, he's eating a cricket. So 
So you can take a look if you are interested in animals and see what the world might look like from their point of view. Look at that, look at that big dog nose. How cute, right? So that's another series. You can read any one you like from that series. Um, there's a couple other ones uh, in there as well, a cat and a horse. So if you want to choose one of those animals, you can, I just grabbed these two. All right, our last picture book is a big book and it's called Counting Lions. Now this picture looks almost like a black and white photograph, doesn't it? But it's not, it's actually hand drawn by this person, Stephen Walton. The words are by Katie Cotton. And if you look inside here, these are all portraits done in pen and ink. And it has some poetry with it, okay? Some, some verse poetry. And this is one lion. And then we have two gorillas, look at them. And if we keep going on, we have three giraffes. So this book is absolutely amazing to me because these pictures, it's the art in these pictures are amazing as well as the words. So here we'll read, four tigers rest in dappled shade. The mother raises her magnificent head. She is a warrior of the forest, heavily muscled, a flash of fire and night that brings oblivion to her prey. But now she is a mother and she would do anything for her cubs that mew softly against her. Does she know they are too few? What future is there for four fighters, four tigers? So you can take a look at this book. It's absolutely beautiful. And I hope you will come and check it out even if you don't need your week nine square. Okay. On to our easy readers. We are going to start with some sheep. Here's the sea sheep. Now, do you know any sheep that go scuba diving? I don't, but these sea sheep, they can swim and they can speak. So look, there they are swimming with all of the sea creatures. And there's a lot of opposites that go on in this book as well. So you can take a look here and see these nice, good, easy readers with some funny stories. He's playing a pirate and playing catch in the water. Silly sheep. So you can come and check out Sea Sheep and this is by Eric Seltzer, okay? All right, another one is My Friends Make Me Happy and there's a sheep again. This is by Jan Thomas. And if you look inside here, here's all his friends and they're told in word bubbles. So he says, hi sheep, hi friends. And so they're going to play a little guessing game about what makes the sheep happy. And so you can see how they go all along trying to guess what makes the sheep happy. And I'll give you a little hint. It already was said in the beginning of that book. So you'll have to come and check that out to find out what makes sheep happy. Now, moving on to our next one. This is called Fox Tales, the biggest roller coaster. So this one also is a newer one. We just kind of got this series in. And you can see, again, word bubbles, all right? We've got some panels going on here. And this one also has a lot of opposites because they are looking for the perfect roller coaster to go on. And everybody has a problem with some of them. So you have to go through the whole story to see if they could figure out which roller coaster is going to be the best roller coaster for them both, right? They're both gonna have to agree to see which one is the one they wanna ride. So that is Fox Tales. And then from Fox Tales, we go to Mouse Tales. And this is by Arnold Lobel. And this one's an oldie, but a goodie. And it's very, early chapter book like. So we have all of our table of contents here. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stories about a tiny little mouse and what kinds of adventures and trouble they get into. So this is Mouse Tales by Arnold Lobel. So those are our easy readers for this week. And now we move on to our chapter books. So I got a bunch, couple series here that you can choose from. So I brought one, this is Hank Zipser. If you haven't read Hank Zipser yet, I highly recommend. Um, it's by Henry Winkler. Now this one is called Niagara Falls or Does It? 
And basically, Hank Zipser, he's smart, he's creative, he's funny, his pencils are sharp, his binders are bound, and he wants to do well in school, he really does. He tries not to be lazy like his parents claim he is, so if he's not, why is he always getting into trouble? Does that sound like anyone we know? Hmm. Sometimes, even though we have our best intentions, we end up doing things that kind of cause a little bit of trouble, and that's what happens to Hank all the time. So he goes on all these different adventures, and here he is with his science project about Niagara Falls causing a lot of trouble. So if you want to learn more about Hank Zipser, if you want to read some of his adventures, this one is over in our Easy, or our, sorry, our J Paperback series books, and you can come and check that one out. You can read this one, which is book one, or you can read any of them. You don't really have to read them in order as long as you know the characters, okay? So that one's there. Our next one that I have for you is called Time Dogs. So this one is Balto and the Race Against Time. So this is by Helen Moss. And these, this series is actually going to talk about dogs that were famous in history. And there's five dogs. You have to meet them, the time dogs. There are five dogs that find themselves transported back in time and turned into puppies. They must make their way back home, helping some real life historical dogs along the way. In this adventure, Baxter, Trevor, Newton, Mia, and Titch, the time dogs, hurtle through time and space to 1925 Alaska. There, deep in the wilderness, the puppies must help Balto in his fam famous sled race to deliver medicine during a diphtheria outbreak. So some of you may have been reading or hearing about Balto and how he drove um, medicine to help people who were trapped far away from hospitals and doctors. And it started the race, the Iditarod, which is, takes place up in Alaska. So if you're interested in dogs, if you're interested in history, this is going to be a great one for you to check out, okay? Now, our next one, I brought a couple of them. We have a lot. This is a You Choose Interactive History Adventure. So there's a lot of different history um, components uh, that you can choose from with the You Choose series. So any one of them is totally fine. And the, what's unique about You Choose books is you do not read them in exact order. So basically, like we'll read this one. This was about Ellis Island. You are one of millions of immigrants who are leaving their homelands during the early 20th century to travel to the United States. When you reach America, your first stop is Ellis Island, just off the shores of New York City. In this book, you'll explore how choices people made made the difference between life and death. The events and work you'll experience happened to real people. Chapter one sets the scene and then you choose which path to read. Follow the directions at the bottom of each page and the choices you make will change the outcome. After you finish one path, you can go back and read the others for new perspectives and more adventures. You choose the path you take through history. So for example, you have the story starting here in chapter one, right? And so you have some real life um, primary source pictures, which is really fun. And then when you get to the end, it says, who do you want to be? Do you want to be a young Russian Jewish girl? Do you want to be a teenage Italian boy? Or do you want to be a German immigrant facing deportation? So there's three different paths that you can take in this story. And you, it has three story paths, 32 choices, and 19 different endings. So we have all of these. You can, this one is about the story of Juneteenth, which is coming up in June. And then the golden age of pirates. So there's all kinds of history out there that you can learn about through these really cool interactive history adventures. And you can choose any one of them to satisfy your week nine square. All right, our last one for this week is called Floors and it's by Patrick Carmen. And this one is kind of a little bit lighter. It's got uh, a little bit of a mystery to it and a little bit of fantasy going on too. So it says there's mystery and adventure on every floor. There's no other place on earth quite like the Whippet Hotel. Each and every floor has its own wacky design and its own wacky secrets. The guests are either mad or mysterious, and there are ducks everywhere. Leo Fillmore should know everything there is to know about the Whippet Hotel. He is the janitor's son after all. But a whole lot more mystery gets thrown his way when four cryptic boxes are left for him. 
boxes that lead him to hidden floors, strange puzzles, and an unexpected friend or two. Join Leo as he takes the ride of his life without ever having to step outside. As the hotel starts falling apart and the mystery thickens, there's only one thing Leo can know for sure. The future of the Whippet Hotel depends on him. So this is a little Charlie and the Chocolate Factory like if you like Roald Dahl. It's kind of got a little bit of that feel to it. And he's got to solve all these mysteries and take care of the ducks at the same time. So hopefully maybe if you're looking for something a little bit fun and just try to solve a crazy mystery, that one will be the one for you. Hope you found some good ones in this week's collection of recommendations. They'll be on display on week nine at the library here so you can stop and pick them up. And we hope you will be filling up your bingo card and checking off your boxes. Make sure you bring them in so I can stamp them. And like I said, hang up your review sheets and you'll be one step closer to bingo. See you guys next time. Bye.